end up, our suffering can sometimes be so intense that we become our own false teachers. We begin to say things about God that the apostles would not affirm. We begin to say things like he's not good. He, he doesn't love me. He, he doesn't see me. We begin to talk about God like he is something other than holy. But as Christians, I get the tension, the tension of having to deal with the sovereign, sovereignty, the, the fact that God has control over everything, like the sovereignty of God and suffering. That's a tension that we have to reckon with. I've had to deal with it myself. Like, when I think about how my mother, she would often drop me off at a family friend's house. And she was dropping me off because she had to go to work. And I was five. She didn't know what was on the other side of the door, but God did. Like, she didn't know that the nephew of her friend had a spirit of perversion. She, she didn't know that. She, she didn't know that he had intentions for my body that came straight from hell. She, she didn't know that, and God didn't tell her. He didn't give her a dream. He, he didn't send her a word, and he could have. He, he could have given her a warning to keep me out of... But he, he didn't. He, he let her drop me off with the assumption that her baby would be safe. And he knew, he knew that what the teenage boy would do to me would change my entire life. He knew that when he used my body to satisfy his lust, he, he knew that it would affect everything about who I am. How I see myself as a mother. How, how, I, how I function as a friend, how I handle and understand affection, the, the way I view sexuality, even the difficulties in touching people sometimes and not feeling safe in your own body. He knew that would happen, and he did nothing. He did nothing. But the only way I've chosen to make sense of it all is not by understanding God through the lens of my circumstances but understanding God through the, the, the thing that happened on the cross. Because on the cross, the crazy thing you see is that God's son suffers too. He, the Lord of Lords, is verbally abused. He, the King of Kings, is also mocked. He, he, he the, the one who created the heavens and the earth, is shamed and, and humiliated in his body. He, his body is nailed to a tree where he hangs naked for hours, meaning his suffering wasn't even quick. We complain about the duration of our suffering, but imagine being God, the one who created time, set, being submitted to the suffering. Like you, historians say, historians say that to speak of a crucifixion is to speak of a slave's death that, that tells me that the Son of God decided, chose, willed himself to submit to a slave's death. And this is the king. This is the God of glory. This, this is the one who created heavens and earth. This is the one who was sitting on the throne where the angels were going. Like, this is the one who, who did not just stay like a theophany. He, he didn't just stay a, a, a temporary image in, in, in front of Hagar. Like, he became a human being to suffer and die like a slave. And while he was there, while he was there, the one who who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God, which means because he took my sin on himself, the Father saw him and judged him. He judged him. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I understand sinners. I understand the wicked. I understand they should be forsaken, but me, your son, the holy one, the righteous one, the good one, you forsaken me? God asked God a question. And this time, they both knew the answer, which was love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would have eternal life. That means that suffering is redemptive in Jesus' name. I hope you understand what's happening here. It, it means that because Christ died, and because Christ rose, it means that suffering does not have the power to keep me from God. Even if my sin cannot keep me from God because of what Jesus did, how be it my, my suffering cannot keep me from God. That means every difficult thing you have had to endure because of your humanity, 
because of your gender, because of your size, because of your weakness cannot determine how God feels about you. Do you want to understand God's nature? You want to understand God's nature? Look at the cross. You, you want to know what God thinks about evil? Do you see what he did to his son? Look at the cross. Do, do you want to understand why, why bad things happen to good people that, all happen, that actually only happen one time? At the cross. In Genesis 16. In Genesis 16.